Imagine putting a First Nations person as the immigration minister in Canada. Would that not be the most patriotic thing ever? And if Maxime, if you're watching this, you do it for your party. What a better team than Bernier and a bunch of First Nations people. That's the competitive advantage for the Conservatives and for Maxime Bernier. One of the keys to the 2019 contest would be for the Conservatives to stop pandering to their standard base and to bring First Nations people to run major portfolios. First Nations person should become the next immigration minister. And if the Conservatives were in halfway intelligent, they would put a lot more First Nations people in all the preeminent portfolios in the government. Imagine putting a First Nations person as the immigration minister in Canada. Would that not be the most patriotic thing ever to put a First Nations person to run our immigration file in Canada? Do you know how to convince these guys that are coming into the country that are sucking at the public tit? Do you know how to convince them that, the, that they'll be running back to their respective nations like at quicksilver pace? Get them to build housing on reserves and then live on it with all the poor infrastructure that exists on the reserve. Get them to live there for like two years. They'll be running f back so fast to the Middle East they want nothing to do with Canada. I mean, I would rally behind a First Nations immigration minister like you wouldn't believe. They're somebody that would protect the land. They're somebody that would protect the citizenship. They're somebody that would ensure that whatever is coming into the country is actually positively contributing to the, to the country and that does not have a fifth columnist agenda or other sort of nefarious globalist skull-dugging agenda. Three big portfolios in Canada, energy, defense, immigration, with First Nations people running as conservatives in the conservative election. You do that, the NDP, the Dippers, and the Liberals can no longer use that card and say the First Nations people are being disparaged by conservative governments. You would be surprised how many First Nations people in Canada are not natural allies with the Liberals on the left. You would be surprised at the machinations that occur for the, for the appointments of the, um, uh, the Assembly of First Nations and all of the gerrymandering and the stuff that goes on to try to get these particular individuals to run the AFN, you would think that First Nations people are not going to go anywhere near the Conservative Party, and they would. And they would under conditions like I'm describing, and they would under conditions in which these various important ministries are actually run by First Nations people. That's a competitive advantage that the Conservatives need to exploit. That's a competitive advantage that Conservatives could use to finally cement themselves in a position of power and make patriotic Canadians happy. I would fully, fully go to bat for that if that would happen. And again, as I repeat, a First Nations immigration minister that's running the IRCC and the IRB, man, what a welcome breath of fresh air that would be for Canada's immigration system. And it's a, it's a total competitive advantage if I'm describe it in business terms. Why nobody's actually considered putting um, First Nations people to run in preeminent ministries, but we have like the same staid, silly, sort of uh, opportunistic handouts to the preeminent ministries, to the top flight, to the five-star ministries in Canada, but not giving them to First Nations people. Again, an immigration minister that's First Nations. How patriotic Canadian is that? It doesn't get more patriotic than that. And I would stand behind something like that. To have one of those guys or girls run in the next election for the Conservatives. And if, if, and if Maxime, if you're watching this, you do it for your party. And what a better alliance of pure, full-on, totally patriotic Canadians than French and First Nations. Two founding nations two founding preeminent nations in this country that fought together side by side against the Americans in many, 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 many con con conflicts that, were tra that, were, uh, that, that had gone on, on on the North, I was gonna say this, but on the North American continent. What a better team than Bernier and a bunch of First Nations people. You wanna talk, talk about sticking it to the liberals and showing them exactly what we mean when we say patriotic Canadians? We're going to take our 4% minority of our First Nations people and have them run the country, the country that their kin has been trotting for centuries, and we will show you exactly how we're going to run Canada back into the black and away from the... He's from Saskatchewan. His name's Brian. He's First Nations. And um, Brian and I sat down and had a two or three hour wide ranging political discussion about Canadian topics. And that was a brilliant suggestion. Thank you, Brian. We'll be, I'll be joining him for drinks again and hopefully he's been watching this.
Brian's extremely well-spoken, he's extremely articulate, he's extremely educated, he speaks languages, he's been living across the world, he's a veteran of the US Army, he has all kinds of sort of pedigree and experience connected to all sorts of people, his blood ties go back to various chieftains and various people that were, were, were preeminent people, uh, one of his um, uh, one of his uh, one of his kin, if I'm not mistaken, uh, somebody by the name of Little Child, who was responsible for drafting, uh, if I'm not mistaken, Section 45 of the Charter, um, like things like this. He's got like he's got a lot of skin in the game. He knows what he's talking about. Three things that he thinks First Nations people can actually assist with, politically speaking, in Canada. One of them, of course, was the resource extraction file, in which employment for First Nations people in resource extraction industries is like nearing, let's say, 90% of the work eligible population. National defense file, he thinks that First Nations people can have a lot to say about that. And the final thing, which I thought was fascinating, and we ended up getting into like a really long conversation about the immigration file and Ahmad Hossein and the people that are actually running that. And that's your thought of the day. Thank you very much for watching. Thank you again. Just a few more days here in Ukraine and I'm back to Canada. Back to the, uh, my routines, uh, back to work. Um, so I've got a lot of stuff planned. Um, it's going to be a very busy fall. So I'm just happy to get this beautiful weather and just some chill time and some time to vlog and talk to you guys. Thank you again for watching. Beautiful day here in Kiev, in Ukraine. My name is Adam Daniel Mazay.